Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. So I'm just finishing up a data recovery for an iPhone 14 that came in after being slammed in a truck door repeatedly. This phone, it is twisted up like a ribbon. This is gonna be both a little bit of criticism for Apple as well as some uh, praise because I am in absolute disbelief that this phone is twisted the way it is the screen is smashed, but there are no lines in the OLED. And it seems that almost everything is working. It has working Wi-Fi. It has working Bluetooth, working cellular service. The problem with this phone is that it is rebooting every three minutes. It has been rebooting due to 0x400,000. That's 0x400K, not 40K. And this is a problem that is just absolutely plaguing the new iPhones. And the reason why this is so common is because these phones we're rebooting are just absolutely laced with the network of what I call landmines. We have barometric pressure sensor. There are temperature sensors, which I think is reasonable. Um, there are just, there are sensors all over these phones. And if any one of these sensors that they've included in these, in this group, are missing, you get into a situation where the phone won't stay on. It reboots every three minutes. Now, that's completely reasonable for like, say, a sensor in the battery. So if the phone doesn't get communication with the battery, no battery data, then you know it causes you problems where you cannot continue to use the phone. To me, that makes sense because if you have a battery, you know, a malfunctioning battery, you don't want the charging circuit just to sit there and hammer away onto this thing and, until it burns and catches on fire. But what about like say the barometric pressure sensor? Why are we gonna take a phone that has a faulty barometric pressure sensor and make the entire phone useless? Furthermore, not just useless, but why would you prevent your customer from being able to copy their data off of the phone? This particular phone had 475 gigabytes on it, which took hours to transfer because Apple still uses USB 2.0 speeds. And with it rebooting every few minutes, there's no way to transfer just more than a couple of gigabytes. So for sensors in the battery, this sort of makes a little bit of sense to me, like as to why you would just destroy the entire phone if one sensor was missing. But when it comes to even a temperature sensor, like, it would be different if the temperature sensor would have an invalid reading so the thing would just go off and stay off, but that's not what happens. It just reboots and reboots. The iPhone 11 will reboot due to a sensor that's located inside of the power button flex. And the reason why I'm here today is to show you how incredibly screwed this iPhone 14 is, but also to share with you that even though on this model, they have made it really easy to replace the back glass, they have tied up a sensor in the flex cable. If you damage your back glass bad enough, the phone will no longer stay on. And I haven't tested this myself, but if you were to replace the flex cable on this back glass with an aftermarket flex cable, or even a flex cable from a brand new OEM iPhone 14, it will no longer have everything fully functional. There will be stuff wrong because this back cable was replaced. I have heard the process of fixing this referred to as calibration. How in the world can a company this big get away with using the term calibration for such things as this? If I take my hot air station and I blow that on a thermistor and I take like a, a known a known you know a known reading and I, I calibrate this to be an accurate output on the air temperature, well then that is calibration. If I take a chip that's embedded into this flex cable and I just basically make the number on this chip match what the phone is expecting to see, then that's not calibrating, that is pairing or, or activating. We're, we're, we're activating a part. To use the term calibration on this is just... So I said that I would spend a little bit of time praising Apple and here's where that comes into play. Have a look at this iPhone 14. This is, this whole entire phone is twisted. Now at first glance, you might think it's just over here on the battery side, but if we, I mean, I, 
for real, the screen is smashed on this and it didn't even damage the OLED. But the twist, this is not limited to the battery side. That whole entire logic board, the whole logic board, it's twisted like this way. For this thing to have fully functional cell phone service, Wi-Fi is still working, I mean, that, oh, that is completely amazing. So there is something to be said here about how strong this logic board is. Now, I also need to say that the fault with this phone and the three minute reboots with this phone, they are actually caused by the logic board. And I'm gonna get to that here in just a second. So when this phone first came in, I did some research on 0x 400,000. And also I really need to say thank you, like sincerely thank you to everybody in the repair community that it's posting what these error messages are, like what 0x 40,000, 0x 400,000 means and what missing PRS zero or mic zero means. All these little cryptic things that go into that panic log file that say where the panic was that caused it to restart. Thank all of you for posting this stuff on the internet because if it wasn't for that information being available, we really wouldn't know what in the world is going on. So with the information that's posted on the internet, one of the first things that I tried was a replacement back glass. And one of the technicians that had commented on a post somewhere, I don't remember where it was, said that the back glass, it was important to have the original flex cable. We couldn't just use an aftermarket one. So not only did I try an aftermarket flex cable, but I also transferred this little IC off of the original flex cable over to the new one so that we would have matching calibration. But that actually didn't make any difference. This phone still got the three minute reboot and still showed the 0x 400,000. So what I wound up doing to troubleshoot this was after I learned that 0x 400,000 was definitely caused by the back glass or the NFC charging coil, I disconnected this from the phone and I seen that we still got error 0x 400,000. So then I switched over to ZXW tool and I started looking at the pins on this connector for that back glass and I noticed right away, and to my absolute horror, most all of this is hooked directly to joining pins or joining balls on the interposer board that connect the bottom RF board to the top core board that actually holds the CPU. So to get the data communication from sensors that are hooked to this bottom connector, it's completely necessary to have this board assembled and we have to have good connections between the top board and the bottom board. So you all are really going to laugh whenever you see how it is that I got the data off of this phone. I wound up taking the information on ZXW tool. If you look and I mean just look at these interposer pins and look at where they're at. We have tons of stuff on that connector that are right out here where this board is really twisted and bent. This pin on the connector here, it's actually hooked out here on the L shape part of the board, which is, you know, right where this thing is bent. So here's what I did to get the data off of this phone. Since my aftermarket part made no difference at all, I decided to stick with the original back glass. And also don't get me wrong, I didn't do this without, without a significant amount of effort and time and also money spent on parts and troubleshooting this. So I wound up hooking the original back glass up there. And then I took my beloved clamp after comparing the information on ZXW tool and I put a clamp right where I thought the brake would be. Now, the first thing that I noticed after putting that clamp on this phone right there was that after that, the flash on the back glass was actually capable of working. And before I did that, it would not. So for the next four minutes, I sat here on pins and needles just waiting for this thing to reboot. So I wound up getting extremely lucky and after spending money on parts and tons of time trying to figure out exactly why this specific model was rebooting, my black plastic clamp saved this thing from rebooting long enough for me to transfer 475 gig off of it. And why in the world Apple is still sticking with USB 2 speeds makes me nuts. They put USB-C in the newest model phones. The iPhone 15 has USB-C. The 15 Plus has USB-C, but unless you spend the extra $500 or whatever on the Pro model, your USB-C is still throttled to USB 2.0 speeds. Let me be clear, USB 2 came out 20, 
three years ago or something. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think it's 23 years ago. Like, we're talking a technology that's two decades old and Apple is still pushing this on their customers unless they can milk them for another 500 bucks. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the network of landmines that has been put into these phones. If you are a product manufacturer, would you be able to afford to manufacture your product in such a way that if one of the microphones fail or if one little part of your device fails, the whole entire device becomes useless. Wouldn't it make a thousand times more sense if you were a device manufacturer that you would want your device to continue to function if one little thing here or there was out of whack? Who in the world could afford to have the whole entire device rendered useless if the barometric pressure sensor is missing? This isn't about safety. We can blame the battery sensor circuitry and stuff like that on safety but nobody can convince me that there is anything to do with a wireless pickup coil, a flashlight, and a microphone that has anything to do with safety or counterfeit parts for that matter because it won't even work right if you put a genuine Apple part on it. So anyways, that's it for today, everybody. I really thank you all for watching. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like my videos, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you like this type of thing, feel free to subscribe. And I will, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. So as far as displays goes, I might get crucified saying, oh, the touch screen needs to be calibrated and on and on and on. Well, just have a look at this article from Mac Rumors dated for 2018. iPhone display calibration ensures that replacement display is fully integrated with the device's logic board at the system level. The process has been required since the arrival of Touch ID on the iPhone 5S in 2013, followed by 3D Touch on the 6S and newer, and Face ID on the iPhone 10 and newer. So I'm not real familiar with 3D touch calibration, but as far as Touch ID goes, this is literally just telling the logic board, hey, this is the only sensor that's allowed to work. That is a pairing. That is not a calibration. We're not like making something that works but is otherwise like misaligned. We're not just like taking that and, and realigning it. We are literally pairing that with the logic board, which means only a very specific amount of people are allowed to do that. This is the equivalent of like being required to take a car to a dealer to do some goofy process just because the manufacturer put a lock in the way. If the display on an iPhone is replaced, but the calibration process is not completed, then Touch ID, Face ID, and or 3D Touch will not function. This is called pairing.